Well, hi, I'm Scott Mitchell from the Silver River Museum, and we are here for another episode of Museum Mysteries. So today's museum mystery object can be seen in a photograph here on the worksheet. Now, if you didn't print the worksheet, that's okay. This is just a place for the students to take some notes and maybe write down a few questions. Uh, but each other, every other week, I bring another mystery item from the museum. And today's museum mystery object is kind of unusual. Some of you may have seen one of these before, but many of you probably haven't. So I'll describe it to you. And then I want you to try to guess what it is. So um, first of all, let me, let me tell you, I'll give you a few clues about this particular thing. This was used by Native Americans long before any of the Spanish explorers came to Florida. So this is a prehistoric tool, prehistoric meaning before history books, before reading and writing, which means before the Spanish explorers. So up until the time the Spanish arrived in Florida, they used this tool. So let me describe it to you. First of all, it's made out of wood in the middle and it's about, oh, let's see, maybe two and a half feet long. It has an antler, a deer antler handle on this end and a deer antler hook on this end. I'll show you the hook. That's a pretty important detail is that little hook. And this is something that a Native American would use. It's a tool. But in order to really understand how this used is used, you have to also realize that it has a part that goes with it. Now, it a lot of you will recognize what this is. If you look at the end of this, I'm going to set the other piece down. You will see a sharp stone point. So basically, it's a stone point like this made out of flint or chert. And it's lashed onto the end of this long shaft that goes all the way. It's a wooden shaft. And it has turkey feathers on the end, kind of like airplane wings, right? And then this is important also, it has a hole back here in the end of the, of the wood. So these two items would have been used together by prehistoric Native Americans. And this is our museum mystery object. So students, take a few minutes, put your heads together, see if you can figure out what this, what this thing is. What in the world would this be used for? Does anybody know? All right. I see bow and arrow, and it's kind of like a bow and arrow, but there's no string, and this is way too big. Look how big this thing is. This is way too big to be an arrow. So that's close and it's kind of the same general idea, but it's not a bow and arrow. Ah, okay, Tristan thinks it's used. This is in Miss Womack's class. Tristan thinks it's used for hunting fish in the water. Well, it certainly could be, and they would have used this to hunt fish in the water and other animals on dry land. But what is this thing? Anybody know? We're getting pretty close. It is kind of like a bow and arrow and it is used to hunt. All right, I'm not seeing any answers. I think I have stumped you guys. Oh, I see from Miss Ha, a spear. This is the spear, that is correct. We have a spear point, we have the long spear and we have the feathers on the end. Okay, Rodney and Miss Womack's class says a spear. So this is a spear, that is true. But this is not a spear and it's not a bow and arrow. So I'm going to tell you a little, whoops, a little story. If we have uh, field trips come to the Silver River Museum and I'm explaining how this object is used, what I will do is I will pick out the shortest kid in the class, the kid with the small arms a little fourth grader or a third grader. And I'll say, come up and you can be my assistant. And I'll make that kid stand next to me and we'll compare our length of our arms. And I'll say to the class, 
Now, who has the longer arms? Me or Rodney? I'm just using Rodney as an example. And everyone will say, well, you have the longest arms. Your arms look like gorilla arms compared to Rodney. And I'll say, that's right, because I'm grown and I'm six foot four and I've got big long arms. So then I'll tell Rodney to go sit down. But I'll say to the class, if I was to hold this spear and throw it just with my arm, and if Rodney with his short arms, because he's a kid, if he was to throw the spear with his arm, who would be able to throw the spear harder? Tell me who would be able to throw the spear harder. Would Rodney with his short kid arms or with, would Mr. Mitchell with his long grown up gorilla arms, six foot four plus be able to throw the spear harder? Who says me and who says Rodney? Who can throw the spear harder? That's what I wanna know. What do you guys think? Natalie in Ms. Wilmack's class says, Mr. Mitchell can throw the spear harder. That is true because I have a bigger arm. I'm stronger, right? My arm is longer, so I have more leverage. This tool is used or was used by prehistoric Indians or Native Americans to throw spears. And the way that they would use this is they would hold on to this piece first of all. They wouldn't throw it away with the spear they would take the hole in the back of the spear and the hook in the end of the spear thrower and they would put the hook just like that, right? Can you see how it's pretty flexible? And they would hold the spear thrower with their hand and they would hold the spear with their fingers. And I'm gonna back up just a little bit. And I'm not gonna throw this obviously because I'm inside and I'll get in trouble. Plus I might break something and it's not safe. So I would not recommend it, but I will just kind of go through the motion and show you how it works. So if you were to throw this, you would use the spear thrower to launch the spear, you go like that. And this launches the spear, but look how it works. Here's the thing. This is the length of my arm without the spear thrower. Now let's pretend the hook at the end of the spear thrower is basically the end of my arm. Look what it does, it makes my arm twice as long. So remember Rodney with the short arm and me with the big long arm, I just made my arm twice as long. So that means that when I use this spear thrower to launch that spear, this spear will go much further and hit with much more force. And all of the energy I can put into it is concentrated right here on this little cutting point. So when it hits the target, if you're hunting for fish or deer or mammoths during the ice age, this would be very, very powerful when it hit its target. And this stone point, the spear point is very sharp. This flint or chert, if you know how to break it just so, you can make it like a knife blade. Now, why would Native Americans use Deer antler, just kind of like bone, you know, deer horns, deer antlers, and wood, and turkey feathers, and stone. Why would they use these kind of things and not metal or plastic? Can anyone tell me? Can anyone tell me? And I see that uh, Miss Raj's class was waiting. I just let them in. Thank you. Sorry about that. Can anyone tell me why the Native Americans did not use metal? Plastic was not created. Now metal was created, but they, the Indians, the Native Americans did not have metal in Florida. <clears throat> so stone was the hardest and sharpest thing that they could find. That's right. They didn't have metal, they didn't have plastic. They didn't have rifles. So if they were going deer hunting, you can't just run up and tackle a deer right? They, they'll run away from you. So you need a tool like a spear or a bow and arrow to be able to catch that animal. Now, why is that important? It's kind of mean to go out and, and hunt these poor deer. They're not bar bothering anybody. But guess what? Those Native Americans could not go to a grocery store. There was no grocery stores. There was no hardware stores. They had to make all their own tools and they had to catch all their own food. So they used tools like the spear thrower. Now, we mentioned, somebody mentioned, a bow and arrow earlier. 
They also used the bow and arrow, but guess what? They didn't always have the bow and arrow. They didn't invent the bow and arrow until maybe about 2000 years ago. Everything before that, all of the hunting before the bow and arrow was invented was done with an atlatl and a spear. The way that we know this is we find, archeologists find the remains of atlatls, like the, the hooks, uh, the spear throwers, the hooks and the handles. We, they dig these things up in the archeological sites along which are the places where the Indians used to live along with the spear points. So that's how archeologists know that they used to use these. Now, you might've heard me uh, say the word atlatl just now. This is called a spear thrower, but it's also called an atlatl. An atlatl is a funny word. It is actually an Aztec, uh, it's an Indian word. The Aztec were the tribe that lived in Mexico when the Spanish went into Mexico to take over Mexico because they wanted the gold and silver, right? It was about 500 years ago. The Aztec warriors used what they called atlatls or spear throwers to throw spears at the Spaniards. And the Spaniards, because they had reading and writing, they wrote down that word atlatl. They were very impressed with it because it was a very, very serious weapon. And they had to be careful of those Aztec warriors that were using atlatls to throw spears at them. So that gives you uh, a little bit of background about the spear thrower or the atlatl. And this is a prehistoric spear thrower is what it is. It was used before the bow and arrow was invented. So thousands and thousands of years ago, we think during the ice age when mammoths were alive, people were using spear throwers to hunt. So I have a PowerPoint presentation. I wanna show you some pictures of atlatls in action. And this is our first slide, but, well, let me go back. I took it off. That's our first slide. We don't wanna use that one. We wanna go to this one. All right, give me a thumbs up if you guys can see this. Can everybody see that? Okay, good. So this is the little drawing that I did, the sketch of the atlatl and the two atlatl spears. And you can see the hook on the end and the handle and the hook again, just as a refresher, the hook goes back here in this hole and they use it as a, as a catapult or as a lever to launch those spears. Now here's a drawing of a hand holding an atlatl and a spear, or at least that's part of the spear. You can see how the hook fits into the back of the spear. And you can see this atlatl is a little different. It doesn't have the antler handle on the end. Each one might have been a little different um, in different sizes, maybe depending on the, the size of the person using it. But look at this funny thing. This is actually a stone that is tied on to the end of the atlatl. And what that does is it gives a little extra weight, a little extra power when you, when you launch that spear. So sometimes archeologists also find the stone along with the hook in the places where the Indians used to live. Now, this is a close up of how the hook fits into the back of the spear. Remember, that's a hole back there. You put the little hook into the hole and that seats it and then you're able to throw that spear. And it takes some practice. It's something like riding a bike. If you try it the first time, it can be a little tricky, but once you learn, this is one of those atlatl hooks that was excavated or dug up in an archeological site. An archeological site is just a fancy term for a place where people used to live long ago. Uh, so if we want to learn about the Native Americans, how do we learn about them? Like the Native Americans that lived thousands of years ago. They're not around anymore. How do we learn about them? we have to look for clues, right? So one way is to go to places where they lived and dig up their, uh, the things that they left behind, like this atlatl hook. So this is where the, the wooden part would have fit. And this one in real life, it looks really big on the screen, but in real life, it was maybe, oh, the size of, um, you know, like a box of crayons about that long. Okay, here's another picture of an atlatl that someone made, and you can see the hook here. This one has a few grooves to hold it, you know, for your finger and your thumb. And then these are actually very interesting. <clears throat> these are real atlatls or spear throwers that were left over from Native Americans that lived out west where they had these super, super dry caves. And what happens if you leave something in a super dry cave? 
um, and there's no moisture in the air and it's really hot, what happens to them? It just kind of gets mummified and dries up and stays there, right? So in Florida, wood, if you leave wood out in uh, outside, enough, enough, enough years go by, that wood just falls apart. But if you're in a dry cave out west, like in the desert, the wood actually just stays there. It just is really dry. There's no moisture, so it just lasts. So these are actual atlatls that archaeologists found in caves out west that were used by prehistoric Native Americans. And here, the, the end of this one is broken off. You can see it would have had a hook out here someplace. But these are, these are handles. So this is where your thumb and your finger would go through. And then there's the handle. Um, and here's a drawing of somebody throwing a spear, kind of like pitching a baseball, is that type of movement. Okay, here's another drawing of a, of a Native American hunter and he's throwing that spear and you can see it starts here. This is about halfway through and then he's launched that spear and the spear is going off towards his target. Okay, now modern people, uh, sometimes they like to use atlatls kind of like archery or target practice. And it, it's an it's a interesting tool to try to learn how to use. It takes a little bit of practice, but once you get the hang of it, you can see all the holes in the paper target there. People have been um, throwing darts at that target and you can see that they're actually hitting it. So this, this guy is getting ready to launch that spear from his spear thrower or atlatl. And this is a picture of another kid who has actually just launched her spear. You can see a few extra spears laying on the ground here. She's just launched it and you can see it flying away there. So again, it takes some practice, but if you, if you practice and if you have somebody showing you, you can actually learn how to use atlatls. In February, out at the Silver River Museum, we have this big event called the, it's the Silver River uh, prehistoric arts festival and we have a range set up where people can try bow and arrow and we actually have a range where people can practice with atlatls just like those photographs. So that is today's museum mystery object and the thing that I want you to remember is that this was used for thousands of years before Native Americans invented the bow and arrow. And this would have been their main tool for hunting and probably for warfare. If they were fighting back and forth with their neighbors, they might throw spears at each other with a tool like this. And this was used uh, all over the world uh, by prehistoric people, but certainly in Florida, we had them. And we know that because archaeologists find the leftover pieces and parts from the spear throwers or the atlatls. So... Does anyone have any questions about Native Americans? This is Native American Heritage Month. And for the next uh, three episodes of Museum Mysteries, we'll be talking about Native Americans and mysterious objects that we have at the museum that I'll teach you guys about. Um, anyone have any questions about the atlatl or the spear? Here's a picture of them again. Got questions, your teachers can send them to me by chat and then I'll answer them for everybody because it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have nine different classes joining us right now, which is great. I am so, so happy to see you all. Okay, I have a question from Craig. What other weapons did they use? Well, we talked about the bow and arrow. They had the bow and arrow. Uh, later on, they, they developed that and they actually used the atlatl or the spear thrower and the bow and arrow. They didn't just throw the atlatl away once they invented the bow and arrow. They had clubs, uh, they had knives, they had, uh, I think they had sticks that they would throw like a, almost like a boomerang, like a throwing stick. Um, clubs, knives, bows and arrows, atlatls, throwing sticks, mm, spears. Um, those are about it though. Traps, they could trap animals, fish traps, animal traps. Because you remember, I said that they couldn't go to the grocery store. They had to catch their own food, right? Okay, how old is it? That's a good question. Um, this is not very old. This is one that was made to look like the old ones. Actually, both of these are not very old. Um, these are probably 10 or 12 years old. And archaeologists made them for us to have at the museum to show people how they, how they work. Um, 
Um, Aria wants to know how far the spear will travel. That's a good question. If, if the person is really, really strong and, and they launch the spear, they can make that spear fly about almost as long as a football field is long, about 100 yards. So that's a pretty long way. You could not do that just with your arm. Um, let's see, where did they find, where did they find the evidence in Florida? Most of the time, divers will find the atlatl hooks like the bone part or the handle in rivers. Usually, and we actually have a few atlatl hooks at the Silver River Museum that I think came out of the Aquawaha River that are, they look a lot like this. Um, so most of the time in Florida, we find the pieces of the atlatls in the rivers. And the reason for that is, is because bone and antler, if it's just buried in the ground, it normally doesn't last. But if it's down in the muck in the bottom of the river, it will last many, many years. So most of the examples from Florida come from rivers. There's a couple of exceptions to that. Let's see. Um, how old is it? How do I know how to throw it? That's a good question. I have, uh, because I work at the museum and we have that Silver River Prehistoric Arts Festival, people will come to the museum that weekend who are experts at throwing atlatls. And they taught me, they showed me how to do it. Uh, I, I'm not very good. I mean, I can kind of hit a target maybe some of the time. If I was having to uh, catch my own food with an atlatl, I would be very hungry. Let's put it that way. Uh, so I know the basics, but I'm not an expert at it. Let's see. Um, um, Miss Minami's class, Anthony, first grade. What was it made out of? Well, it's made out of, we have deer antler, wood, and deer antler. And sometimes they would add a stone to the end of the atlatl for weight. And then we have, we have on the spear, we have stone, we have leather, we have wood, we have turkey feathers, and we have some more leather. So there's one, two, three, four, five. There's five different materials that go into making these tools. And if you think about it, you had to, you had to, you had, someone had to come up with this idea and then you would have to make each one of these pieces separately and put them together just right. So the people who invented this were very intelligent. Um, and then you had to learn how to use it, right? Okay, so let's see. Greta wants to know if this tool was used in other countries. Yes, and this is a fascinating thing because people in general, people like us, we will come up with, let's say uh, the problem is how do we cook food? And you can only find stuff in nature to cook food. Like let, you wanna make soup. How do we cook soup? Well, you have to have something to put the soup in, right? So there's only so many things. You can use a coconut shell or you can, maybe carve a rock into a bowl. Well, people all over the world invented pottery, making a, a clay pot. And people came up with the same idea without ever talking to each other uh, because that was all they had to, to use. That was the only material they had to solve the problem. So, so the spear thrower is the same way. People came up with this idea in Europe and in, um, in, in North America and Central America and South America in Australia in um, and the far north um, around the polar regions where the Inuit people live um, or Eskimo people. Um, so people um, all over the world came up with the same idea of these spear throwers. And it doesn't mean they ever uh, communicated back and forth. They just came up with the same idea. Bow and arrow, dugout canoes, pottery. Those are all inventions that prehistoric people came up with. So let's see. Uh, Lucas wants to know why they used spears instead of the arrow. Well, remember, they didn't invent the arrow until about 2,000 years ago. So for thousands of years before that, they had to have a way to catch animals, and they used the spear and the spear thrower. Okay, Mason would like to know um, about the clothing of Native Americans. Well, that's a good question, and it depends on where they lived. Now, you have to remember there's only certain materials that you can use to make clothing. So give me some examples of what you could use to make clothes if you're a Native American. And remember, you can't go uh, to Target or the mall to buy your clothes. You have to make your clothes. What would you make them out of? I wanna hear some ideas from the students. 
Teachers, if you can send me some chats. Deer skin or leather, yes, you could use the skin of animals. And if it was in a cold environment, that would be a good thing, right? Deer hide, buffalo skin. Okay, well, what else? What if you live in a place where it's too hot uh, to wear a buffalo robe, you know, or there's no buffalo around? What would you use? Leaves, that's true. And we think of leaves as being little things, but what about big leaves that you could weave into cloth? If you could, if you could hit them with a stick and make them kind of soft so they weren't too itchy, and then you weave them into a cloth, almost like a grass skirt, like a hula skirt. Um, leaves, plant fibers, um, Spanish moss, they could weave into uh, um, almost like a cloth. Uh, cotton, Native Americans would raise cotton and they would make cloth, they would weave. Um, um, alpaca down in Peru and South America, they would raise alpacas, which are like big hairy camels. They would take the fur off and they would spin it into yarn and weave it into cloth. So they made, they made things, at, yeah, I see cotton, very good, wool. Yep. So they made clothes with materials that they could find, uh, depending on how hot or cold it was. And in Florida, you know, in the summertime, they probably were just wearing, you know, something pretty small because it was hot and you didn't want to be all covered up with clothes. And you might wear something out of leather or, or, or plant fibers or Spanish moss or something like that. And then when it was really cold, if you live up in North Florida, maybe you had an outfit, pants and a, a coat or a robe out of animal hide that you would put on in the winter. Yeah, those are good answers, guys, good. Okay, um, let's see. Rodney wants to know how long it is. Well, the, the, the atlatl itself is, oh, about two and a half feet long, like this. The spear is probably, oh, maybe six or seven feet long. So, and these would come in different sizes. Um, and I think the atlatls, would come in different sizes also depending on, on how large the person was who was using it. Okay, so that gives you an idea. All right, let's see, do we have, oh, they could use moss. Okay, yep, yeah. animal fur, moss, wool, cotton, leaves, deer hides. You guys are practically ready to go live on your own in the wilds and make your own clothes, I can tell. All right, do we have other questions? Do we have other questions about the spear thrower? or Native Americans. You guys had some great answers. Great answers. Do we have any more questions? Okay, I see one more. Hannah is curious about how someone would hunt if their eyesight was poor. Oh, that's a pretty good question. You notice I'm wearing glasses, right? If, if I didn't have glasses, I couldn't maybe see that deer way out on the other side of the field to sneak up on them. So I think the answer to that is because um, people live in families and in groups, little villages, and we take care of each other, right? So if we have uh, little babies or, or older folks that maybe not can see as well, um, people who can do things um, will, will tend to do those things for the other folks. So I think the answer is, um, if you couldn't see very well, you might not be a hunter, but maybe you could see up pretty close. Maybe you were the person who would make the stone points, or maybe you were the person who was working on turning Spanish moss into cloth or helping to cook. So people probably had different jobs depending on what they were good at. Um, okay, let's see. We've got some other questions. This is coming in. Let's see. Oh, I see Miss Wilmax says she's enjoying the presentation. Thank you. That's very good. All right. Um, Ms. Quest wants to know, what was the largest atlatl in spear throwing? Boy, I don't know what the biggest one is. Um, I haven't seen them too much longer than this. So some of the spears get pretty long. Um, but if you all do a little research on your own, you can find uh, lots of images of people with spear throwers, both ancient and, and modern. Uh, I think this is about as big as an atlatl would be. Uh, the spears maybe get a little bit longer. Okay, Ryan wants to know the best time of day to hunt. Well, it depends on what you're hunting. If you're, I think uh, just from working out at the state park and, and going there every day and seeing animals during the different parts of the day, different times of the day, I think most animals are most active early in the morning and in the evening. 
they kind of maybe take naps or hide in the bushes during the middle part of the day. So um, I probably think early in the morning or late in the evening is the best time to go hunting if you are uh, having to hunt for your food. And again, not everyone agrees with hunting, but we're talking about these prehistoric Native Americans and uh, they could not go to the grocery store. They had to either find their own food or catch it or, or raise it in a, in a, in a garden. Um, all right, these are wonderful questions, guys. It is 1.30, we're almost out of time. If we have one or two, I'll try to answer them quickly. Um, but if not, I'll be back in a couple of weeks with another museum mystery object that will have to do with Native Americans. The next three museum mystery episodes will be Native Americans. After that, we have African American history. And then after that, we have military history in Florida. So we've got some cool things to talk about for the rest of the school year. And I'm so happy to have you all join me. Uh, I hope one day that the museum can see students in, in real life again and we start seeing field trips again soon. But until then, I'm happy to meet with you guys over the computer. Okay, all right. Well, thank you all for joining me. And students, you did a great job. Those are excellent questions. Um, if you're going to make your own atlatl and spear, talk to somebody who knows what they're doing and get some help and just don't go um, hurt yourself or poke your eyeball out with a stick and then we don't want anyone to get hurt. All right, so if you're going to experiment, make sure you do it safely and talk to someone who knows what they're doing. Okay, thank you all and I will see you again soon with another museum mystery object.